It's been a glorious autumn day in the cane fields of the Mulgrave district inland from Ayr and it's easy to see why this irrigated farmland is Queensland's most productive cane growing area. This is the Ayr Home Hill region, famous both for its sugar cane and the mighty Burdekin River that provides a source of irrigation to a variety of horticultural and agricultural industries. Today we're at the Mulgrave farm of Mark Hatch to learn more about a pilot dewatering project that's helping cane growers manage rising groundwater and salinity levels in the Burdekin irrigation area. It's part of the Vigorous Water Use Efficiency Project and in this area we've noticed since the irrigation area was uh, opened up in the early 90s there's been quite a rapid increase in the uh, level of underground water so we might have started at around 12 metres and now it's up to around 6 metres in places or much higher. So it's starting to be a real concern for production and impacts on the environment. And what we've done as, as a pilot project is install dewatering bores. Last year we put five in this area in the Mulgrave and we're looking to put another three in up at the Upper Horton, which is a little bit further closer to Townsville from here because they're the areas where we've seen that really rapid rise in groundwater levels. Marion Davis is the Burdekin Productivity Services Extension Officer, keeping a watchful eye on recently installed dewatering bores. As the Burdekin's Rural Water Use Efficiency Industry Futures Project Officer, Marion's working with irrigators connected to the Mulgrave Horton Water Supply Scheme. Irrigators like Mark Hatch, who's one of the first farmers to get involved in the pilot project, and allow a dewatering bore to be commissioned on his farm. Well, mainly because of the, the water table rising and trying to do something before it affects you know, the yield of the crop and also it, it helps with my watering here. Your yield will, will drop and um, yeah, it would be very hard to farm here because it's, it's heavy, heavy clay soil and at the best of times it's wet and yeah, if the water table is high well yeah you wouldn't be able to work your ground. Well if we get water coming too close to the surface we could get things like uh, salinisation that we've seen in other irrigation areas like the Murray Darling where you get actually salt areas start appearing. Also it just impacts on farming activities if you've got water really close to the surface it means it gets harder to to work the ground it's because it's wet so you sort of Sitting on a layer of water, which should be 12 metres, is now at 2 metres. Um, it just makes it really hard to, to grow things. It impacts on your crop production because the roots are wet um, and, and general farming activities become more difficult. So it could really reduce the, the pr productivity of these areas of the Burdekin if we don't manage that groundwater level. Since the earliest years of cane farming in the Burdekin Delta, growers have relied on the aquifer or underground water supply to grow their crops. Over the decades, substantial irrigation infrastructure has been constructed in and around the Burdekin River, including the Clare Weir in the 1970s and the Burdekin Falls Dam, Queensland's largest water storage in the 1980s. That channelling of irrigation water to farmers over thousands of hectares has led to the aquifer being replenished at a much faster rate than it could drain. We've gone from an area like the Burdekin, which is a dry, dry area, a relatively low rainfall compared to further north of us, which is in the wet tropics, so with the dry tropics, and we've completely changed the system. So we're adding water constantly through irrigation, through channels, the river runs all the time now so there's a, a water head in the river and we've just changed the whole hydrology and environment around us and we keep adding water onto the system. We're bound to start increasing the groundwater levels. Dewatering bores like the one installed on Mark Hatch's farm have been identified as one step in a long-term fix. Three observation bores have been drilled in close proximity to the main bore. One just a few metres away and two others at distances of 50 and 100 metres. The idea is to determine what impact dewatering is having on the aquifer at varying distances from where the water is being drawn. Here we've got one of our observation bores um, just to measure the drawdown in the, the aquifer around the production bore that we've installed. So we've got a data logger down this hole which is permanently logging 
um, the depth to water from the ground level so we can keep an eye on and monitor how, how much effect the pumping is actually having. And the idea is that we want to see how far we're getting influence from, from pumping down with the, the bore. So we certainly see the, the levels drop in this bore close and we've also seen them starting to drop in the further away bores when we're pumping. So we've got metres on all of our dewatering bores because we're trying to keep track of how much water is actually being pumped from each of the bores. And when it's running, of course, it just uh, records the, the volume of water going through. And we can use that to work out how much it's costing per megalitre and how much water we've managed to pump. Back at the Burdekin Productivity Services office, Marion examines a readout of piezometer measurements on a computer screen. There's evidence here that groundwater levels on Mark's farm are starting to fall, and that's good news for the project. We're seeing that, especially when Mark pumps, that the water level drops quite dramatically in our observation bores, and then after he stops pumping, the water level comes back, but not quite to the same height. So over the, the six or eight months that this bore's been operating, I think we've seen around a 10 centimetre drop in that first observation bore closest to the, the actual bore. Hopefully we're going to see that continue over time and draw down further and further away to reduce those levels. It's a promising first up result, helped along by Mark's dewatering bore being one of the more productive in terms of flow rates. Achieving reasonable rates of flow has been one of the obstacles for this project to overcome. We got put in around August last year. We've had a really dry summer, so I've um, used it a lot. Every time I water, I, I use it, just mix it with the channel water. Yeah, I think I've used well over 250 megs, so, so yeah, no, it's been really good. The electricity side of it hasn't been real good, but, but yeah, no, it's been... Um, a big help. A couple of the bores haven't pumped as much as some of the others so we and we haven't seen a whole lot of change in those water levels and there's reasons for that. One is a really low yielding bore so it does only pump one and a half or so litres a second so we're not going to pump a lot of water with that one and we've got another one that's quite saline so it's very salty water so to use that it's it's a bit of a challenge. We can only pump a very small amount of that water out to get it mixing well enough to be able to use it for irrigation. Increasing salinity in the aquifer is a key issue that still needs to be addressed moving forward. Mark is mixing his bore water with channel water to make it more suitable for irrigation. And so far, the crop is thriving. Yeah, well, this is 183 and been irrigating this pretty well every, every week. I've got the channel water and the bore water going in here at the moment, mixing. Like I said, I pretty well water every week. As it's getting cooler now, we might um, drop off every 10 days. Years ago, we um, used to water every two weeks, and then yeah, the learnt that if you water probably every week, you push the water through faster and actually grow grow more cane and use the same water as watering every two weeks and yeah, the production is so much better. The cane stops growing probably when you do water it for the day but then yeah, it really powers on and grows for the, for the two or three days and then as it dries down, yeah, it stops growing again. Then you just water it again and then, yeah, that's in the peak growing time of sort of December, January, February. In a district where plant cane can return 150 tonnes to the hectare, it makes sense for farmers to be playing an active role in managing the health of the aquifer and in the process ensuring their irrigation future. More dewatering bores are set to be constructed in the Horton district through 2015, with the project due to run until 2017. If successful, dewatering will be one aspect of a broader solution. We're very different, we're fully irrigated and rely on the irrigation. If we didn't irrigate, we wouldn't have cane, but we need to really manage that irrigation so that we don't have, have bigger problems being created by doing exactly what we need to do to grow our cane. So, irrigation management to try and reduce deep drainage is really important in the Burdekin. If we can get some, some good results from this project, we can certainly make a good argument for in expanding it and getting permission to, to drill more bores and pump more water. 
and hopefully reduce our ground levels over, over more of the district than the sort of a relatively small area we're dealing with here.